Hello everybody! So I hope you are doing well inside your homes. So today we are going to review the concepts in chapter 1 which is all about the overview of human behavior in organization. As we have discussed last time, it is most appropriately known as OB or organizational behavior. You may have difficulty finding books about human behavior in organization, but if you look for organizational behavior, you may find a lot of books. So, organizational behavior class may be defined as the study of human behavior in organization, of the interaction between individuals in the organization and the organization itself. So, it, it's the field of study that focuses on three primary determinants of behavior in organizations. So, number one is individual, the second one is groups, and the third one is a structure. So, I haven't discussed this uh, earlier, but the first chapters that we have discussed in HBO actually tackles the first determinant, which is all about your individual or individual behavior. So, the goal of um, organizational behavior is to make organizations perform more effectively and efficiently in a sustainable manner. I will now give the floor to one, to two BSBA rather, to discuss the rest of the concepts in this chapter. Organizational behavior. Organizational behavior is a study and application of knowledge about how people, individuals, and groups act within organization. In OB, we have four elements. The first element is people. People is a very important part of an organization and there is no any alternative of an organization without people. The internal social system of an organization composed of people consisting of individual persons and groups. Second element is structure. Structure defines the formal relationship of people in the organization. It describes how job or task are formally divided group and coordinated. There is created different types of position for doing work nicely in an organization. This position or designation are manager, accountant, administration, and general staff. This officer and staff have to connect structurally so that they can work efficiently and can play an important role in the organizational development. So the third fundamental element of organizational behavior is technology. Technology is a very important primary aspect of organizational structure in the modern age. Technology supplies essential resource and equipment to the employee for doing their work efficiently. Thus, technology affects on their activity. Employees are not able to finish their work with a bare hand. They build the buildings, prepare the design of the devices, determine the working process, assemble the resources with the help of technology. The fourth one is social system. Everything around us is society, and everyone in the social lives together. The social system determines the organizational work environment and from which the organization can operate. As people cannot live alone, just like organization cannot run alone its job. The organization has to do its activity with the help of the employee. No man is an island. That line seems to be very familiar to us where it reminds us that we need other people and we don't live just for ourselves. And for us to deal with the fact that we live with other people despite of our backgrounds and differences. Organizational behavior helps us to learn more about this, especially dealing with employees or workmates. Organizational behavior shows us a clear picture on how to be well-mannered specifically in our workplace. This helps us to grow professionally and to be more responsible in taking good care of our relationship with other colleagues in organization or institution. Through this, we can build and establish a strong connection with others where we will be the source of motivation, trust, and good camaraderie among our workmates.
In 1890 to 1910, Frederick W. Taylor, known as the father of scientific management or the disciple of the scientific management movement, introduced the primary purpose of scientific management was the application of scientific methods to increase in the individual workers' productivity. Taylor used scientific management analysis and experiment to increase workers' output. He did it by regarding individuals' equivalent of machine parts and assigned the specific respective task. Human Relations Approach was proposed by the Australian researcher Alton Mayo and it talks about social factors and productivity. According to Mayo, socializing and communicating is important for us to be more productive. He also says that we should treat anyone or everyone as a human with individual needs and not a machine. Humanity should be our top priority more than anything else. Apart from formal relations and techniques used by some organizations, we should also consider the informal relations. Informal relations in the workplace can help us build a solid and strong relationship between employers and employees and make the organizational goals become successful and amazing. Thank you. That would be all, ma'am. Freud's mother. Sigmund Freud, who brought the idea of people are motivated. In other words, his theory is about motivation. The motivation theory holds that individual unconscious desires and emotions shapes their behavior. The Freudian motivation theory explains the sales process in terms of the consumer fulfilling conscious functional needs as well unconscious needs. For example, yung consumer bibili ng cellphone, so the salesperson will motivate the consumer on how the cellphone is in good quality. Sa paraan na yun, yung salesperson is trying to get the consumer to purchase a mobile phone. Yung Freud's model can help the organization better market of services and products. Yan lang. Thank you. The Behaviorist Approach by Watson and Skinner Through an approach called Behaviorism by J.B. Watson, it is a theory of learning which states all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment through a process called conditioning. Well, the theory of behavior modification by Skinner, it is a treatment approach which is focused on changing behavior. The major goal of behavior modification is to replace undesirable behavior with acceptable ones. And a commonly used element of behavior modification is a positive reinforcement or a reward system and can also discourage unwanted behaviors through a punishment. Humanistic Approach by Carl Rogers um, Carl Rogers, believed, he believes that people should acquire their own values and attitudes instead of um, committed to a fixed set of prescribed goals. So, for example is, may nakita kang pulube, nam um, namamali mo siya. And then, ang sabi ng mama mo is, huwag mong bibigyan yung mga yan kasi nasasanay sila. So, ako naman, for, may, may, para sa akin, um, magbibigay ako kapag alam mo talaga na sa isang tao na hindi, wala siyang kakaya na mag-work, ganun. Um, another example is, kanyari, nadapa ka. I mean, I mean, na, may, I mean, may nadapa. And then, ang dapat gawin dun is tulungan siya instead of gayahin yung mga ibang tao na tinitignan lang siya na, ano, na nadapa, ganun, tulungan, ganun. In simple words, um, Carl Roger believes that we should be aware on what our attitudes and values in our own way, hindi yung nagagaya lang natin or dahil lang sa sinabi ng ibang tao. Humanist Approach by Fritz Perl The gestalt psychology was introduced in 1940s, developed by Fritz Perl with the help of his wife. 
The gist of psychology is wherein a person is being plucked by in numerous conflicting twists, desire, and needs. Example na lang natin dyan si Anna, na hindi pa niya alam yung mga kailangan niya, yung needs niya, nagugulan siya kaya hindi niya maabot yung goal niya. Yung isa naman, si Rose, alam niya na yung mga pangailangan niya, yung mga kailangan niyang gawin, kaya parang madali na sa kanya maabot yung goal niya. The goal of just talk psychology is to teach people to become aware of significant sensation within themselves and the environment so that they respond fully, equitable, and reasonably to the situation. With the help of just talk psychology, people will be aware to their needs. The benefits of just talk psychology is to improve sense of self-control, better awareness of your needs, and also to improve your mindfulness. Abraham Maslow is one of the most influential psychologists of the 20th century. His biggest contributions to psychology were his contributions to humanistic psychology as well as his development of hierarchy of needs. The hierarchy of needs comes from the Maslow belief that the fundamental desires of human beings are similar despite of the multitude conscious desires. Maslow described his hierarchical needs as being made up of five needs, which are physiological, safety, love, esteem, and self-actualization, arranged in pyramidical manner, with physiological needs making up the bottom of the pyramid. Maslow described these needs as being arranged in a hierarchy of propensity. Ethics is defined as a discipline which is concerned with what is wrong and right. It is also important to have ethics because it is the way how you can identify and define who you are as a person. It affects your beliefs in life. While organizational ethics are the principles and standards set by the company or business you belong. This is how they identify what is right and wrong behavior in organization. The ethical behavior is study of why people make ethical and unethical decisions that they do. Through these people, they can make improvement and decision-making skills and promote ethical culture organization. Injustice and dishonesty. Everyone in the organization must practice honesty and justice in everything they do in the company. That includes interactions with the customers and clients. They need to work ethically by abiding by the law and the organization's rules and regulations and avoid harming the customers and even the competitors. For example, if you are working as a journalist or an employee of a, one company, the information must be reliable and above all must be true. And besides, honesty and justice in the workplace can help them to attract customers and it is good for the company to gain profit. So the second ethical issue is unethical leadership. So may mga instances na nangyayari ang favoritism. Example is kapag mag-hire ka ng new employees sa isang position. So, madaming applicants ang nag-apply and madaming mas eligible. Pero may kakilala ka or kakilala yung parents mo na gusto mag-apply sa position mo. Kaya ang ginawa ni employer is hinay na na agad yung kakilala niya. Doon pa lang, nagkaroon na ng special treatment. So, hindi na nahirapan si employee na pumasok sa position mo kasi nagkaroon na siya ng bagay. So, this means na an employer should treat his or her employees fairly and equally. Take and conflicting goals. Conflicting goals are goals in the workplace that are usually related to deadlines, quotas, and overall goals which the employees are expected to be meet. So these are the goals of different people which conflicts with each other. Examples of these are 
industrialists will make huge dams in villagers that are displayed from their places without rehabilitation. So, meaning to say that the urban peoples are in favor of them because of the getting electricity through the mother. The villagers are opposing this because they are affected by the construction of them. So, we move on to the unrealistic goal. An unrealistic goal is when the goal is something that requires more energy, talent, and time that you have in order to achieve it. So, these are the goals that have been too high expectation which might have been too ambitious or not realistic examples of these are financial goal and business goal harassment and discrimination in workplace every workplace must be aware of the anti-discrimination laws and regulations that exist in order to give a proper and just treatment of the employees. Not being aware of this thing will probably damage the company in both financially and reputationally. An example of this is when you are hiring an employee, then you are considering unnecessary qualifications or guidelines such as age, sex, race, religion, mental and physical disabilities, and etc. Falsifying documents means to make a document appear to be genuine such as it was authorized, signed, or created by someone who did not actually authorize, sign, or create, create it. So the falsifying a documents can be also including altering a documents without permission or authorization to do so. Example of falsifying documents is altering, cha changing, modifying, passing, or processing a, a document for an awful or unlawful purposes. Misleading information. This incorrect information gives to an eyewitness following an event this can be during post-event discussion or to take or leading questions. The technology and privacy concern with a specific issue in privacy information technology has opened up society and decreased privacy. This lesson will be explored a number of privacy issues that one of concern, including electronic and ability of, of personal information like cookies and workplace monitoring and as a year passed the technology continues to involve through this a different aspect and society can develop this efficiency and also the employer have the ability of monitoring employees activity on their computer for productivity and purposes for example of privacy concern it is privacy tacking and Trending. And also the and also to give you the example of technology is, is to give you uh, information and communication. Conflict of interest. A conflict of interest occurs when a person has a conflict in choosing between his or her personal interest to his or her responsibilities as an employee. An example of these ethical issues is when you're hiring your relatives just like your aunt, your uncle, your mother or your father, your sister or your brother, your cousins or your friends to a specific position just to fulfill the services needed to that company and even when you're having a relationship or dating with your supervisors or to your subordinates and um, accepting a gift from a client above the amount that is acceptable by your company.